Hello everyone. In this new tutorial, we will continue our Battlefield 6 map editing process using Godot engine. We will create a small map from start to finish. We will also upload it and play test it in the game. Please make sure you have checked my previous tutorial which shows how to download the portal SDK project file and set up the Godot editor. I will load the Battlefield portal project. Click the portal setup button so your project is set up properly. This is only needed once. Now coming to the file system on the left side, open the levels folder. We will start with the outskirts map. Double click to load it. You will see here all the objects that are currently available in the map. First, let's see how to move around in the Godot editor. Hold right mouse button and you can rotate in the viewport. If you hold right mouse button and press W, A or S or D, you can move forward, left, right and back. If you use the scroll mouse wheel, you can increase or decrease the moving speed. It is very important to understand how to navigate in the viewport and it may take a little practice especially if you are using a 3D editing program for the first time. I will move towards an empty area of the map where we will be creating our new map. There is no empty blank map available at this time. All maps have to be created from the existing maps. The object library is in the middle and it contains all the models that we can use. Make sure you switch to the outskirts map object library. Other libraries will not work. Sometimes a problem may arise that your object library may show previews of all objects as same shape. To fix this, Click the portal setup button to recreate the object library. It will then show the correct object previews. You can hover over any object to see how it looks or double click to open it in a new window. There are no textures shown in the editor. Now search for a floor object. Drag it into the editor. Close the object library so we have more space to see our map. Press Q to enable the select tool and move the floor object and place it above the train. You can press F to focus on any object, it will make it closer to the viewport. You can see moving in the editor is important, so make sure to practice till you are comfortable using it. I'm going to make the floor bigger. In the transform property, change the scale to 5. You can also press S which is the shortcut for the scale tool. Disable the world environment to make the visibility of the objects a bit better. You can also turn off the map assets objects. Keep in mind we cannot edit the existing terrains or models at this time but in future updates this may be possible. Next go to scene menu and select save as. Give your map a new different name. Your map will be added in the levels folder. Open the object library. We will select a barrier model. Of course, you can use any other if you want to. 
It may look a bit difficult to identify because there are no textures. Drag the barrier model over the floor and it will auto snap, placing it right above it. To duplicate any object, press Ctrl D and you can then move it. Our map structure will be simple. We will have one team on each side and some barriers in the middle. Press Q for the selection tool and hold down the shift key to select multiple objects. I am going to make the floor more bigger. You can also change the editor lighting slightly from white to yellow. This lighting is only in the editor and will not change in the game. Add a few more barriers or different types of models so we have more cover. You can press page down to snap any floating object in the air to the floor. Continue adding different objects as you like. Now select Team 1 HQ object. It will be far away in the middle of the map. Zoom out in the editor and drag it to the new map area which we have created. Also make sure to move this object above the ground so the players are visible. If they are below the surface they will fall down when the map starts. Use the mouse scroll to control fast or slow movement in the editor. Next select the second team HQ point and place it on the other side. I do understand this whole process may seem difficult at this time but with practice things will become much more easier to work with. I am going to slightly increase the floor size to 15 so we have more space. Change the size of one barrier to make it big. Move the second team backwards. Let's look at the combat area. This defines the playable area that will be in the map. To edit it, select the collision polygon 3D object, switch to the top view and here you can see how the playable area looks. I will select the green handle and move it towards our new map area. But this playable area is too big. To make it smaller, click one point and drag it to refine the shape. We do not need too many points as our map is very simple. So we can remove some of them. Hold down the control key and right click to remove any point. And this makes it easier to adjust the playable area. Switch back to the perspective view.
If you want to add a new point in the combat area, hold down Ctrl and this time press left click instead of right. This will add a new point which you can move. Once you are satisfied with the area, you can hide in the viewport so it does not interfere while we are editing the map. Close the object library. We are going to add a few vehicles. Go to the object folder and here you will find gameplay. Open it and in the vehicles, you will find all the vehicles that are available. You can add a plane, helicopter, tanks and whichever you like to. I am going to drag a few on the map. We can also add a tank. When you drag it over the floor, it will auto snap to it. Use the selection arrows to move things around and make sure everything is above the ground. Remember to save your file here again. Next, go in the common folder and add a deploy camera. This camera is used to see the map in the game when the player is going to deploy. I am going to rotate it and position it on the side. Change the transform to local. You can see it is now easier to rotate the object in that same location. We can also add a conquest point, rush mode and other custom type of game modes but we will cover those in next videos as they are slightly more advanced. We are now going to export this level to test it in the game. Very important step here is to check the name of the map during export. If we export this, it has exported the original MP outskirts map which is wrong. This problem can happen sometimes and you end up seeing no changes made to your map level. To fix this, Close this new map, open it again, the export map name will be correctly assigned. And if we export now, you can see we have the correct name that we saved. Now coming back to the online portal editor, I have a few unpublished maps which I made for testing. Click create new. We have only one default option. Click it and go to start editing. Set any time that you want. Now go to map rotation. On the right side, if there is any map, remove it. Drag the original map which we edited. It was the new Sobek city map, also known as outskirts in the editor. Here we will turn off include special data setting and attach our file. Select the map file which was exported from the Gado editor. Next we will go to teams. We just want a few bot players available. We won't be changing anything in rest of the settings. You can set classes, weapons, whatever you like feel free to explore these settings. Now go to the publish setting. 
add a name and some description. It is important that we play test our map properly. Otherwise, it will be rejected in case there are issues and problems in it. There is a review system. So make sure whatever you are submitting is of good quality and you have tested your map. Click the save button to save all your online settings. Click create new. Let's move to step 2. Here you can set any image which will be shown when the map is listed in the game menu. Pick any. I will select this one. Save again. The step 3 we are not going to do anything here. Go back to the portal main screen you can see our new unpublished map is shown. If you want to make any layout changes in the map, go back in the Godot editor, make changes, export from the editor and reattach the file. Use the modify option here instead of creating again from scratch. Now I have loaded up Battlefield 6. Go to the community section and here you will find my experiences. Inside we have our map we just created. I'm going to click it. You can set server custom messages. We are going to host it locally since we are just testing. Let it load up and you can see how it looks. Click deploy and we are in our map. You can see the bots are automatically playing with each other. On the other side of the map, the players will also appear. Let's deploy again and see if the vehicles are working or not. If you try to go outside the playable area that we defined in the editor, it gives us a warning to return back. So that means it is working. Right now we have set no objectives. This is more like a two team deathmatch type of a thing going on. From here you can get some ideas what type of things we can do. It is difficult to cover everything in a few videos, but I will continue making more. I hope you find this video useful. In the next tutorial, we will look into more things related to map making in Battlefield 6. Hopefully, editor updates will also come which will make things easier. If you like to see more, then please make sure to leave a comment or suggestion. Click the like button and subscribe. Turn on notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the battlefield.